Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be showing you guys the first 15 things to do on your iPhone 15 or the iPhone 15 Plus. These are the non-pro models, but they have seen some changes like the dynamic island. So let's dive in, configure your phone, and maximize your ownership. Let's start with number one. All right, so the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go to your settings, and then you wanna scroll down just a little bit and go into the battery. Tap on it, and then right away go into battery health and charging. Once you're here, you wanna make sure the maximum capacity says 100%. That means it is a brand new or very lightly used battery. If this number says anything below 100 for a brand new phone, that's a problem and you want to return and replace that phone and then repeat this test. Also, you wanna see right over here, it should say peak performance capability. Now while we are here, you also want to go into charging optimization. Now by default, it is set to optimized, but I will let you know, you can disable this. And by disabling this, it is going to actually increase the charging speed for your iPhone from zero to a hundred. But the side effect of that is going to be the battery life is going to degrade a little bit faster, nothing dramatic, but if you're gonna keep this phone as long as possible, I recommend optimized battery charging. The 80% limit is going to prolong the battery life as long as possible. It will never charge your phone above 80%, and the way the batteries work in these phones, that is going to extend the battery life. So it really depends how long you're gonna be keeping this phone, but I recommend keeping it right here just in case I do want you guys to know exactly what is going on. Now, one more thing, you can see on the top, we have a battery indicator icon. What I wanna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to enable the battery percentage meter so you can see exactly what the current state is. So all you do is right here, you tap on battery percentage and now it says 98, which means 98%. So that's number one, let's move on. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about has to do with the dynamic island, which is brand new on the iPhone 15 and 15 plus. So as an example, there's a couple things you can do with it. You're gonna get a lot of notifications in this area, but let me show you some of the things you can control. So for example, if I launch my music application, okay? And if I were to play a track, so right now a track is playing. Now when I pull this up, that is going to send itself to the dynamic island area, and it's gonna be live as you can see. Now what I can do is I can press and hold to get a preview for that particular application, or I can just tap it to bring the application to the forefront. Now, one more thing, as you have something running in the dynamic island, and let's say you launch another application, as an example, I'm gonna use the clock application, okay? And I'm gonna start a timer right here. So now we have a timer. Now, when I pull this up, I'm gonna have two things in the dynamic island. I'm gonna have the music player and the timer, and also I can press and hold on the timer to get a quick preview or just tap on it to bring the application to the forefront. So in a way, it is like a little task manager on the top. Now, as I have things in the dynamic island, I can swipe through them as well, okay? So just something to keep in mind, you can swipe back and forth to change the shape of the island and also make sure as you take selfie photos, Make sure to wipe the lens here, the front facing camera constantly with a nice clean cloth to make sure the fingerprint smudges from interacting with this area do not mess up the selfies. The next thing I wanna show you guys has to do with customizing your contacts. So if I go to my phone, I have a contact right here. Let me show you how to add custom posters for every single contact. So here's the contact, all you do is tap on edit, okay? And then you're gonna tap on add a photo. When you do that, at the bottom, you have the option to choose a poster. You can take a brand new photo with the camera, you can go to your gallery, okay? Or you can pick a Memoji, which I'm gonna do in this example. So let's just pick this one right here, okay? You can further customize it as you need based on who you are um, setting this for. Then you tap on next, and you can tap over here and even change the font that is gonna show up behind the poster 
when that person calls you, okay? Also change the color as you can see. And then tap on done and that's going to be the poster. When that person calls you, this is what's going to show up for that particular person. Then you tap on continue and it's going to ask you to crop for the actual photo. So I can pick this area, tap on choose. Now what I'm going to have is I can change the background colors as well. What I'm going to have is I'm going to have a contact photo and a contact poster. So they're both customizable as you can see. So when I tap on done, you can see here's the contact photo and here's the contact poster. You can do this for any contact you desire. It's going to add a bit of customization flair to your phone. Now let's quickly talk about the camera. Very important, you're going to be using this all the time. So you go to photo, you go to video, and basically right over here, that's all you get to see. But there's a lot more to the camera than meets the eye. You want to go to the settings, okay? And then you want to go into the main menu right here, right here. You want to scroll down, scroll down, and you want to look for the camera option. Once you go over here, you can see when it comes to recording video, you can go inside and pick a default resolution and frame rate for your videos. I recommend this one for videos, 1080p at 60. When I go back into the camera, and if I go over to the video, you can see by default it is HD, which is 1080 by 60. Now, you can tap on these to go to 4K. Tap on this number to go to 24 frames per second. Tap again, 30 frames per second. So you can make the modifications here, but here you pick the default options. One more thing you want to do with the camera. Enable the grid and enable the level. Once you enable the grid and the level, what you're going to have is you're going to have these lines, which is great for alignment. And when you're holding the phone to take a photo, you're not seeing it right now, but you are going to see a level on the phone, which is going to make sure you take straight level shots. So try that out and see it for yourself. You're going to see a level right here after you enable this. And go into the formats, make sure high efficiency is enabled. If you go with most compatible, it's going to take more space, but also is going to be more compatible with various different devices. Mostly the high efficiency works perfectly fine. And the photo capture mode can be changed from 12 to 24 for default. 24 takes more space, 12 takes less space, but 24 is going to be higher quality. I would just leave it right there. Now go back, but there's a big thing right here, and that's this thing right here, resolution control. Now the phone actually has a 48 megapixel camera, but by default it is 24 megapixel shots. If you want the maximum quality, you enable that feature. Now when I go to the camera with the resolution control turned on, I am able to activate 48 megapixel shots by tapping this button. It says HEIF max. So you can see disabled, now it's 24. Enabled, now it is 48 megapixels. So if you want detailed shots, go for the, uh, just enable this and toggle it on and on as needed. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to know how to customize your phone, especially the lock screen and the wallpaper. So go to settings, again go to the main settings and scroll down and go into wallpaper right here. And then what you have is you have a bunch of collections. Okay, so this is the first collection. That's the lock screen when I tap on it, and that's the home screen, okay? And then if you want to create a brand new collection, you swipe over and you tap on plus. Let's start a brand new collection. So first, pick a wallpaper. You got the weather, you got the astronomy wallpapers, allow ones, and you can swipe through these guys. Now let's just pick a regular color. If you scroll down, you'll see we have a regular colors here. So let's pick this one, okay? I can swipe through styles. I can tap and change the clock style. This is for the lock screen. Remember, make it more bold, change the color and all that good stuff, okay? And also tap here to add widgets, as you can see, just to customize your phone, give it some useful widgets, and then tap on add. Now, that's gonna allow you to add a wallpaper pair, but you can customize the home screen separately. First, let me just do this. So now we have a brand new pair, but I can tap here 
and customize the home screen wallpaper, let me just tap here, separately as you can see. So from here, I can you know pick different colors, different gradients, I can add photos. And just to show an example, if I tap here and change the color, now I'm gonna have this color as my home screen wallpaper, but still have that in the lock screen. Now one more thing with the lock screen, if I go to the lock screen, okay, and if I double tap, and if it's unlocked, I can also press and hold right here to access those same collections and even add additional collections right from here, okay? So this is basically the same thing, let me go inside, as this right here. Just two different ways to access it. But that's how you customize the lock screen and the home screen, and remember, you can add as many collections as you want by tapping on new and adding new ones, okay? It's all gonna be up to you. The next thing you wanna talk about has to do with Face ID. So if I go to my settings, okay, again, go to the main screen, scroll down to where it says Face ID and passcode, put your passcode to access the menu, and then here there's a couple things that are very important. Now, first and foremost, make sure all this stuff is enabled. So you can use the Face ID to unlock your iPhone, make purchases in the App Store or iTunes, perform an Apple Pay or access your wallet and all that stuff. But at the bottom here, you want to make sure these two are enabled. Require attention for Face ID, attention aware features. So basically, if you're sleeping and somebody brings the phone to your face to try to unlock it using your Face ID, if these are enabled, that's not gonna work because these features require you to give attention to the phone by looking into the sensor. So when you're sleeping, your eyes are closed, you're not giving it any attention, so it is gonna know that and it's gonna allow that person not to unlock your phone while you're sleeping. So fantastic little feature, make sure it is in fact enabled. Now one more thing you wanna turn off by default is you wanna go to your settings. And this uh, option we're just gonna search for Tap on search and write in auto brightness, okay? Now, auto brightness is in fact at the bottom here, it is enabled by default for some reason. So what it allows you to do or allows the phone to do is set this slider automatically on your behalf, okay? So I don't like that, so I turn off the auto brightness automatically. It might affect the battery life. So read this area right here and it might also affect the long-term display performance. But the fact that it is enabled by default takes away my manual control option. So I wanna be able to do this anytime I want, anywhere I want by myself. But with the auto brightness turned on, it just does it for you, and sometimes the values are not exactly correct. So make sure auto brightness is in fact turned off based on your need. Now, one more thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to your settings, okay? And this is a very important feature, by the way. You wanna scroll down and go into Emergency SOS and make sure this is enabled. So anytime the iPhone ever detects a car crash, it is gonna make a call to the emergency automatically after a countdown, okay? That was a notification in the Dynamic Island, by the way. Uh, but again, enable this. So if the phone detects a car crash, it starts a countdown, and then when the countdown is reached, it makes the call in case you cannot do it. If it gets triggered by mistake, you can cancel it before the countdown goes to zero, okay? So make sure this is also enabled. And one more thing you wanna do real quick is you wanna make sure you customize the notifications panel, okay? Customize this to fit your needs, this area is not customizable. These buttons are customizable. All you do is go to the settings, scroll down, go into the control center. Here's the active widgets. If I pull this down from the corner, here's all the ones that are already active and enabled right here, these five, but I can add more from here by tapping plus, plus I just added the dark mode, home, low power mode, screen recording, stopwatch, so now when I pull this down, you're gonna see we have even more options, okay? You can also eliminate these home buttons from here. So look at this, if I go up here, show home controls, 
Now they're gone, okay, so it's cleaner. So I got all my options right here. Those are these options, the included controls. And then, based on which one is important to me, I can grab it and move it to the top. So dark mode is now at the top. If I pull it, it's gonna show up right here, as you can see, okay? Fantastic. It's definitely something you're gonna be using a lot, so make sure you customize it specifically for your needs. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day.